Hi, it's Jen from thebayhome.com. And I'm Leslie with A Swing and a Sway. And today we're gonna to be talking about homeschooling. So we're gonna have Leslie introduce herself more and tell us about just your, your family life and homeschooling, <laughs> your why. <laughs> my why, let's start there. And I'm gonna try not to cry. <laughs> my why, so my daughter, my oldest daughter used to go to public school and I literally cried every single day dropping her off. It was awful, my youngest ended up testing way ahead of where she should have been. We were testing out of kindergarten and she actually tested into the middle of third grade and they wouldn't allow me to, because of the age difference, wouldn't allow me to put her in. And so we decided to homeschool her because yeah. it wouldn't make sense, right? She would, and she's a troublemaker, so <laughs> she would cause problems. But um, at that point we were still keeping our daughter in. She was gonna finish out second grade in the public school and then we were gonna bring her home and then COVID happened and so it, school got cut short. And we just decided at that point to just homeschool, just to jump all in with both kids. It's a long drive to their school. Um, they didn't go to the public school here. They went to, to the, yeah, the one. Charter. <laughs> yeah, to the yeah. charter. So I was spending about four hours a day in the car, just like getting them prepped and ready and taking her to school, waiting in the lines and all of that. It was about four hours a day. And now we do school in about, I don't know, an hour to three hours a day, four days a week. Which so. is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes way more yes. sense. I'm able to work and homeschool and my husband's really involved as well. And it just, it really just works way better for a family. Yes, I agree. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't suggest homeschool for everyone. I think uh, that's where a lot of people are like, well, you say homeschool and then you assume everybody needs to do that. And I'm like, I'm like, actually, I don't. I think that it's smart to make what's the best for your family. That's the decision that you make for your family. And yes. it might even not be a whole family. It might just be a, one kid needs a public school or a charter school and another kid needs to stay home. And I really just think it's whatever's best for your dynamic. Yeah, I agree. But of course, we are a little biased since we do have such good experience with it. And like... I think just the quality of like family time too and like you know your kids are actually raised by you and like mm -hmm. you learn alongside them and I don't know I just think it's a really fun relationship where it's like you're growing too and they're growing and it's just like this togetherness so I love that. I agree and one thing I do with my curriculum which most people ask me what curriculum do you use that's like the number one question when right. people start homeschooling. I actually make my own curriculum and my kids are really involved in the process so um, my oldest right now is into careers and what options there are. And she's starting to notice, like, we go to the dentist's office and she's like, well, there's somebody answering phones and there's somebody cleaning and there's somebody doing this. And what are all these jobs? It's not just the orthodontist or the dentist. There's a whole team. And so we're really digging into that. And we got to sit down and make a curriculum together. And it was all of her questions that she wanted to have answered are now in our curriculum. And so we're researching, okay, let's walk into... Um, the eye doctor or the chiropractor or whatever it is let's walk into a museum and just notice everyone it's like little ants you know yeah. moving around yeah so, because it takes such a big team to like put those things together mm -hmm. and even like museums you know they have janitors they have the cash register they have even the people you know, finding the, the stuff you put in the museum yeah. so we've been learning a lot about jobs that you would never think of like we went camping and she's like hey who cleans this park up oh there's a park ranger and then we actually went and found where the park ranger lived and we've done interviews with these people just That's what amazing. kind of college did you have to go to what was the process of being here or the person stopping traffic we had to stop in <laughs> traffic and wait to get through a one lane a one lane road and we were there for 20 minutes and my daughter's like hey how'd you get this job what's the worst part of it so really including your kids in things they're interested in yeah. creates that love of learning the lifelong yeah Mm -hmm. And it can be done anywhere. We travel a lot because we can. Yeah. We can. That's awesome. See you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. And you talked about designing your own curriculum, and you actually sell it on teachers, paid teachers, I right? I do. I do actually sell not a lot of it yet, but it's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're working on it, and my kids actually do the digital art to create them. That's so amazing. So they came up with the fonts and the layouts and all the things. So, so that's kid-made. It's kid-guided. And then I just go make sure their spelling is correct and, you know, the lines line up and whatever. But That's amazing. Yeah, and are they doing it. that on Canva? 
They're doing, yep, okay. they do that on Canva. My kids love playing around on Canva too, so it's, it's a really nice tool. It's free. Um, you can get the paid for version, but either way, I think both versions are great. Um, I use it so much that yeah, I pay for you it. You have to pay for it, yeah. But my kids have their own accounts for free. So yeah, yeah. That they get it's to go. awesome. I love that. They and even, so, it's the, oh no, I used to say the curriculum, is it based off a lot of the books that you have? Yeah, so I will actually take a book and create from that book so they can follow along, get their reading, their language arts in. And then we do digital art to create the workbook that goes with um, the book that we're reading. And then we do subject-based. So this month is careers. Um, I can't even remember what we did last month. Last month was gardening. So we took gardening books and they have a garden journal and it's like a journey oh, journal. So it's, you get to like, okay, first day, what do you need? Write down the tools you need, write down what seeds you have, figure out what you want to plant. and and really go through this journal. And so they're still doing it because their garden is still growing. So the journal will last them, I mean, until October, yeah, where they can journal and draw pictures and That's try awesome. and include art and math and all that. And things. I know at one point, didn't you guys do like an author, like a, how to do a book or? Yeah, that book I is remember sitting. you did that a while ago. It's sitting right here, but yeah, That's how to make a book. Yeah. And then they actually got to make their own book, which was really cool. We used another company for that. It was also sitting right there. It's called <laughs> Illustory, okay. like Illustrate, Illustory, and they get to draw their own books out and they send it in once it's done. My, my kids haven't finished theirs yet, but once it's done, they'll send you a printed book with their art and their words oh, and their awesome. handwriting. It's, yeah. It's pretty cool. So yeah, we learned how to make a book and learned all about the illustrators and everybody that's included in that process as well. So it's, it's kind of crazy. It's just to let my kids guide and we even did yeah. like a secret detective month and we learned about <laughs> I don't even know like secret codes and how to decode things and we did an escape room at home and through a book escape room through a book but that's so fun we did um those kiwi crates okay and so one of theirs was like a spy kit and so like they had an invisible marker that yeah. they would have like the purple light you know and it was fine at first. My little kids were using it appropriately on the paper, but then my older kids got it and were writing on walls. I'm like, you guys. No. <laughs> but it was still, it's fine. We it did, comes off easy. <laughs> we did one of those too, and I made this art project, and it was like a self-portrait, and then we wrote like self-affirmations, like positive affirmations, things people have said about us and things we want to be. And I wrote it in my best handwriting. I, I like painted this whole portrait and then wrote all these words around it. And my daughter, as I'm like, almost done with it my daughter says um that's my invisible ink pen <laughs> no <laughs> so the the painting is still alive and well but there are no affirmations they all disappeared <laughs> what a bummer <laughs> i know it's fine oh that's too funny those invisible inks <laughs> um so you talked about traveling too and i know both of us have husbands who travel for work and in the past i've gone along with my husband to some of his sites mm -hmm. if they're within driving distance, like, you know, not East Coast or anything, but um, do you want to talk about, like, when you do go on trips and kind of how you school on trips and learn? Yeah, so we we take our trailer and we just go, and a lot of, we don't actually go when my husband's working because he's, Busy he works time. a long, long yeah. days, so, and we have a million animals, so yeah. <laughs> somebody has to be home, but when we do go, we take our animals with us, and we go on our trailer, and we just got back, actually, yesterday we just got back from a five four day five day vacation and I make sure that they have a craft box and the craft box has things that I want them to play with because it's limited it's not like this where they can just pick and choose you know right. I'm like okay I want them to learn to tie knots so we're bringing things to learn to tie knots and bringing the book that teaches them how I want them to learn how to build a fire so that book is there as well and then we have the supplies to make sure they're building a fire and this time we actually made like a teepee fire which my kids were like whoa that's so cool and they got to watch it collapse and then we learned about building codes and how that all matters and we were talking about careers and how there are engineers that actually will come up with, they will create this TP fire and then see how it burns and how it falls and then they'll build structural engineering so that it doesn't happen in our homes and the difference in like having a door closed or not having a door closed. So we built that in the fire pit while we were there. And so it's not just watching a YouTube video, Yeah, you know? And then we went and we actually hiked in Zion National Park and we were walking up this stream and we we're talking about how many animals live there and why we keep it clean and you know there's just so much to learn in nature and we're talking about 
the water levels are so high right now that trees are actually fallen and we're talking about the root systems and all of that and one thing we wanted to focus on was wildlife and how it's spring and it's you know there's wildlife and you can go see birds laying eggs and so we're looking for birds nests and we're looking in the water we're hiking up the stream and there's a frog two frogs <laughs> literally mating Oh. <laughs> While we were looking through, I, I got it on video and we talked about, you know, how that you have to fertilize the eggs. And then we went upstream a little bit and you could see hundreds of eggs in the awesome. water. And it was, we really talked about how they, you know, the fertilization and how life is created. And then we talked about the life cycle of a frog and for them to actually see that see in a tangible way. way. Yeah. And, yeah. and they understand like, oh, this is why we take care of our water because these frogs would die if we didn't. Mm -hmm. And just being able to really get out there and see how yeah. things are, how things are happening. Yeah. So. I, I'm a huge fan of like nature learning and being out and just exploring because there's so much to see out there that you can't experience in a classroom on a video, like, you know, mm -hmm. getting out there and actually physically being there and seeing it is so huge. So yeah. And I we also that. like, we went through a tunnel. Because you have to, in Zion National Park, there's that mile. It's like a little more than a mile long. And we talked about the history of that and how people actually built that tunnel. Because it was finished in 1930. Uh -huh. So we're like, okay, in today's world, these are the machines we have. This is the technology we have. But back then, okay. how do you think that was actually done? And then we did a study on that once we got home. Because my kids were like, wait, but really, yeah. <laughs> how was that done? We would have never talked about that if we hadn't been. I mean, I have a third and a fifth grader. Mm -hmm. And they're learning about the history by being there and asking questions and just being curious and my husband's really involved in a lot of that you know he works construction and so he knows the answers where I'm yeah. like I don't know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the great part I think is like learning with them because even like things I did learn in like my public education and I think even any education you have you there's gaps you forget things you know and you know you only really hold on to what you think is important or what resonates with you and so I love that, like, I'm, like, relearning things, too, and, like, or learning new things, even, you know? Math, Math for me, I'm like, okay, I have to teach division of fractions. That's what we're working on <laughs> right now, and I'm like, huh, <laughs> I'm going to have to go look up tips and yeah. and tricks to, to relearn how to do this. I mean, I have a third grader that's dividing fractions. <laughs> like, I'm almost 40, and that's <laughs> <laughs> teach her how because she's interested in it yes my my fifth grader that's is good. like Man, I don't really like that's mm -hmm. math I don't really care to do unless it's in the kitchen and yeah but it's things that they're gonna remember and I I really think that's where homeschool hits the mark is if you let your kids kind of guide they are going to retain the information because they care about it mm -hmm. and they're experiencing it they're gonna have those core memories of seeing the toad in the water or you know going to the mountains and seeing the waterfall and seeing the snow run off they're going to remember those landslides because they saw them they, right. they witnessed that they helped clean up after it and we're really letting our kids guide their own education and excel in things they excel in my third grader would never in any other school setting be able to divide fractions mm -hmm. because in third grade i don't even know what they're doing in third grade what are they doing multiplication maybe maybe getting into division like regular yeah. division Okay. So she wouldn't be even doing fractions yet. That's not something they would even be learning. But then my my fifth grader, she loves art and she can create watercolors and she can do like so many different mixed media arts that she loves to do where in school, like they don't really push art anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's her passion. She loves to write and tell stories and illustrate her own books where that wouldn't, she wouldn't even have the energy to do that after school. Right. We're in homeschool, you know, I teach for an hour a day and then yeah. the rest of the day is theirs. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, I have bookworms, which is why we have this library and they read non like honest. That's what I have to take away from them. <laughs> Put your books that's down. It's time for bed. <laughs> that's what I was when I was a kid. I'd be like, okay, you're grounded from books. <laughs> yeah. And I hate to do that. But at the same time, like if it works, you guys need to go to sleep. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. And I love that too, because I know for me, even like hands on, like just fractions, I used to struggle with. And I don't know if I just missed like the day it was really taught or what in school, but I struggled with fractions. But then like once I actually started cooking as an adult, it, everything made sense. And I'm like, why didn't I like get this sooner? But I think it's because I, I need that hands on approach, you know, right. and something you're interested in. Mm -hmm. For me, math was about money. So I struggled in math my whole life. And then my dad told me one day, he's like, you know what? You're really good with money. Why don't you look at that equation and think, 
this is my paycheck or this is what I have to spend on shoes yeah. or whatever. Right. And That's I true. was in high school when he pointed that out and I was like, so now if I put it into money, even if it's not, even if it's yeah, whatever, it could be whatever kind of math. If I'm like, okay, well, this is how I'm making money. I can figure out percentages and fractions and all of that. that. That's smart. Because <laughs> that's what, that's where my, that's where my brain works. That's how my brain works. Yeah. So. Well, that's amazing. Um, and then also just like the ability, I think, like we're talking about just like to explore interests and stuff. Like, you know, I have a son who's learning guitar all on his own because he was interested in it. And um, I just think that's amazing because I never got to do anything musical as a kid. And of course, like in our day and age too, we're lucky because we do have the internet the way it is. Like, you know, where when we were growing up, it wasn't like that. Right, you can just pick up a YouTube video and somebody can teach you and it's mm -hmm. free. Yeah. It's crazy how many resources there are for free. I yeah. mean, even just Canva. I mean, that's where I base my whole curriculum is on a free program where I can build whatever I want to build. And right. it's incredible. My daughter wanted to learn guitar too. I don't, I have no clue about music. And I mean, I can listen to it. That's about it. Yeah. And she wanted to learn guitar. So we actually went to outschool.com and did a guitar class. I think it was like 12 bucks or something. Yeah. So and bad. she ended up hating it. So oh. I'm like, okay, well, we got a guitar, which I broke. <laughs> I was trying to help her out. I broke it. It's fine. My husband can fix it. But she did, she did a four week course and she's like, yeah, I'm not really interested in this. Yeah. So we got to let it go. And it's not like she has to continue because she took right. that class for a semester or for a mm -hmm. year or whatever. She's not forced to do it. She doesn't want to do it. Move on. Let's do things that you care about where you're actually going to retain it. You're actually going to remember and enjoy it. And then you create that love of learning for a lifetime because yeah. they are doing things. You're not forced to do anything. Mm -hmm. They can do whatever they want. Yep. And for me in my personal homeschool with my kids, it's, you know, they do have to have a basic understanding of you know, all the subjects, but from there they do have that choice, you know, once they get the basics down, if they want to keep going into that and, or if they want to explore something else and like deep dive into other things and I'm okay with that too. So, right. We do the core stuff every day. So we, they are required to do their 20 minutes of reading, which <laughs> is never just 20 yeah. minutes, but I do have 20 minutes of required reading. So mm -hmm. whatever subject we're on. So right now we're talking about careers. So they have 20 minutes where they have to read about careers it, it, no matter what that looks like they have all the resources they need to pick up a book and read about careers if they want me to print something online I don't let them go, them go do their own research online but I, they can guide me and I'll print it and they can read that um then we do we do math we have they have a workbook that they use or they have computer programs that they can use and they have a requirement to meet you know four pages here or 20 minutes there or whatever to meet those goals um we do science once a week. We do art every day uh, because they love it. Mm -hmm. And it, it really, it, I think for me, the creativity is so important to get their energy out, to have them focus on something so that they can then go play and, you know, they're, they're more aware of what they're doing yes. <laughs> when they're playing. So, and then they're required to go outside every day, no matter the weather, unless it's like lightning. But yeah. otherwise, like you have to go outside and... And really what they're doing is earning screens and screens. We use screens. It's not, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, no screens or all screens. And I think it's, you yeah, have that happy medium. Yeah. So we do use screens. Like we use it for math sometimes, but they have to earn screens. And most of the time, by the time they're playing outside, which is their, always their last thing after they get all their school and everything done. I'm like, hey, go play outside. You have your, you know, hour that you have to be outside and then you can have screens. They don't come back inside. So it's, they don't even want yeah. the screens once they're outside. Yeah. And that's the thing that like, cause I'm very much not the person who like, if I could, I would do no screens, but my husband's like the happy, you know, yeah. middle guy. So we do have screens, which is fine. And it works well for, you know, especially if you want to watch a documentary on the ocean yes. since we're not by the ocean or whatever, you know. Um, but I do find like when there are no screens on, it's amazing, like the bonds that they make and like, because otherwise they'd be watching a show maybe on the laptop and then one on the TV mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, and they're just like separate. But when it's off, they're together, they're playing the piano together. Um, right now my kids are out riding their bikes together. Um, so I just love that whole atmosphere of how it gets them to think and be creative and to actually work together or the play together. The amount of games my kids have come up with. Yeah. They play one called, oh man, um, Orphanage. <laughs> it sounds so <laughs> awful, but they do, and they figure out how to, it's, so they based it off of, we read the books, um, 
a series of unfortunate events. Okay. And so they go through this survival mode, and they they really do go. They go out. We live in a wooded area, so they can go outside, and they create worlds out there, and they create shelters and forts, and they figure out how would we survive. And they're really like, how do we entertain ourselves? How do we feed ourselves? And they are not actually like hunting, but they're pretending to hunt, and they mm-hmm. understand the basics of. Okay, where do we find water? Yeah. And so they go to our duck pond. And they're like, that's not water you can drink. <laughs> they have to learn the whole filter system, how right. to filter dirty water. <laughs> and like right now, they're down at the park with some other kids at home school. And they they come home all the time and they're like, oh, we did this. We did rock shops and then we had to barter and trade for, you know, and they're figuring that out. And I'm like, you're unsupervised. You guys have just mm-hmm. figured this out. Because they have the time and the energy to actually think about it. And they're not sitting here letting a screen dictate what they're doing Mm -hmm. however like we said screens are really helpful like we Mm -hmm. we watched this show i don't know i don't know what it's called but it's like big machines and it's like the production of it how it's made and then what it's used for like we watched one on cruise ships and so they would never experience that outside here where we live you know they're not going to go on a tour of a cruise ship and see how the the steam room works (laughs) or whatever right so and even just the ability to even look up on youtube you know how you know I don't know how something's made. Up. How to make sourdough bread. Right. That's what we're living yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, you know, it's nice to have that as a source for not only you, but also for your kids, you know, and for them to see, because like we discussed, like they'll ask questions and I'm like, I don't know, like yeah. we'll have to look that up. <laughs> yeah. I might've learned that in school, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I love that. And I just love that resourcefulness. And we have that Bear Girls series mm-hmm. and like my sons read through it so fast and like, you know they the just love books. yeah okay. and they just love being outside and we also have the other one too that's like the bigger the survival camp that's what yeah. we took camping and yeah. my kids built a shelter they built two different kinds of shelters like a teepee shelter and then they built i don't even know my husband is out there helping them but <laughs> yeah just survival and like really knowing life yeah and then yeah. you can use the have you seen the you versus wild the bear girls on i don't know, if I don't know where it is um yeah, it's Bear Girls and it's you go and choose. So it's a it's a show, but you get to choose. Should we go through the swamp or should we go up the mountain? Oh, that's fun. I think they might have actually done that before. And then you can fail too. So yeah. if you choose the swamp, he's like, oh, there's alligators in there. Chomp, my feet are gone. So let's go the other way. But yeah. And I think even like watching Bear Girls, like, you know, for survival, like it is useful and it is information. Like, I don't know any of that stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm learning it all. So, right. I learned how to build a fire last year. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot that homeschool brings to our family. And, you know, a, a big reason that my husband agreed, and he was the hard one to get to, <laughs> to get on board, but the big reason he agreed is because we have a night owl. And my daughter does not, she does not go to sleep before 11 or midnight. Mm-hmm. And when we were waking up at 6.30 in the morning to get her to school on time, she was crabby. She was not learning. She was falling asleep in class. We were getting calls from her teacher saying, like, she needs to go to bed earlier. It doesn't matter. I can put her to bed at 4.30 in the like in the evening. And She's she gonna still wasn't going to fall asleep. Yeah. And so, and, you know, now it's like we don't start school until 11 so that she has time to get up and do her thing. She reads in the morning. She doesn't come down until she's like ready to come down. And she usually comes down about 10 o'clock, but her room is clean. She's showered and ready. She's just had that morning to herself. And then she comes down, she's got a good attitude. We start school at 11, we're done by noon. They have lunch and then they do self-study. And their self-study, you know, it's guided. So they Mm -hmm. have to do, you know, their 20 minutes of reading and their math sheets and whatever. And we do focus on one thing at a time. Right now we're doing money math. And so that's when mom's available. I, I also work outside of this. And so um, I'm, I work from home, but I still work. And so I am available. I teach from 11 to noon and then they take a lunch break and I go to work. And then I'm available until three o'clock for questions. So whatever they know, they're like, they don't need my help with art. So they'll do art last, but they know they need help with adding up money or counting change or whatever. And so they will do that first and get to first them. so that they can they can have their questions answered because yeah. if they don't get it done they don't get free time they yeah. have chores and tasks and all the things to do that you know part of running a household yeah which is also a huge benefit because they understand chores have to be done I think a lot of kids as me growing up I can say for sure I didn't realize how much my mom cleaned up after us I didn't realize how long it took to cook or prepare to go out of town or how much laundry there was 
your mom at home. Mm -hmm. She did it while I was at school. And my kids actually see that. Mm -hmm. And they step in and help because they're required to. (laughs) Yes, yes. And I think it's a huge, just like an advantage for kids to to learn those basic skills. Like Mm -hmm. how to cook, how to do their laundry. I wasn't Because, yeah. I'm I'm learning right now. I'm teaching myself how to, the basics. How do you, like what spices go together? Yeah. How do you garden? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm learning that alongside my kids. And I want them to learn. Because when they're adults. Like, you have to eat. Mm -hmm. Your house, you have to do laundry. You have to do dishes. You have to, you know, Mm -hmm. you have to do all of that. Yeah, so important, I think. And so I'm grateful that I do have the time, extra time with my kids to invest with them and that they are able to be, you know, alongside me when I am making lunch or breakfast Mm -hmm. or dinner. And I even assign, they have chore charts and like, it has like everything they have to do each day, but it has like, you know, their school and everything. But I assign each of them, like once a week to be a dinner helper so that way they can start learning how to cook meat like meat and stuff because I didn't know how to do that my husband had to teach me (laughs) see my husband didn't know either so it's like we moved out and I'm like oh you have to rinse chicken I had no idea (laughs) because I wasn't taught I was always told to get out of the kitchen and I as a mom I understand that because it's like you guys are chaos you're creating more work for me but I can tell you what I might I have a fifth grader that can cook a full meal, including dessert, and she is a mad woman in the kitchen. Like, she can make snickerdoodles better than anyone I know, and she can also make the dinner, and she can cook the meat, and she can cut, and she can do all that. I love that. And then my youngest is the sous chef. She can crack all the eggs, and she's making sure everything's cleaned up, and they understand, okay, mom's working tonight. If we want dinner, we have to make it. That's awesome. And so coming from an 8 and an 11-year-old, that's a really big... I didn't know how to do that when I was 20. Mm-hmm. I was living on my own going, I don't know how to make tacos. <laughs> Making well, like here. boxed, you know, hamburger helper or something. I don't know. Yeah. And now I make, we call it hamburger helper because <laughs> I've learned, but my kids can also make it. Yeah. They know how to open cans. They know how to, you know, they even know how to go gather the eggs so that they have eggs to make <laughs> yep. for breakfast. So yeah, it's, it's a huge way of setting our kids up for success as adults. Yeah. And I think it's cool because I think both of us, I'm, I don't know, did you grow up in the city or did you grow up country? Both. Okay. Half and half. So okay. when I was 11, we, 13, I was 13 when we moved. Okay. So. Because I grew up in the city and up until we moved out here, we've been out here for like four and a half years now. Same. We were always in the city, you know, so this is really a neat experience, I think, to be able to give our kids the opportunity to take care of livestock and mm-hmm you know, gather the eggs. Like, I never had chickens growing up, so, like... See, and I did. When I was young, yeah. I did. I grew up on farmland when I was young, and then we moved into more of, like, a suburb where, you know, a pool in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> animals anymore, but I grew up taking care of horses and cows and peacocks. The peacocks were really mean. <laughs> I don't suggest having peacocks, but, you know, I grew up doing that where... Which is awesome. Yeah, I learned how to jump barbed wire fences away from animals. (laughs) Yeah, and I think it's incredible skills just to have and, like, to know, you know. And, like, I was so intimidated when we first moved out here. Like, I knew what I wanted to do, but I was just, like, nervous. So we started with chickens, and they were so easy to take care of. But, like, I was so, like, oh, gosh, like, you know. Yeah, So and we have ducks. And the reason we have ducks is for entertainment purposes. I mean, we eat their eggs. (laughs) We eat the ducks, too, but um, really. funny. Yeah, they're fun to watch, and that's why we chose ducks over chickens. I mean, there were there were a lot of reasons, but we chose ducks over chickens because they are entertaining, and we can have a pond, and they go swimming, and and we have geese too. And yeah. My daughter told me this morning she went up to get eggs, and she, I was like, "Why do I even come up here?" She said, "I'm not tall enough to reach the latch," which she's <laughs> not. She can't reach the latch to open the door to let them in and out. And I'm like, "Okay," and she said. But I'm not scared of Hank, which is our goose. <laughs> She's like, I know you are, but I'm not. So <laughs> if you got me a stool, you wouldn't even have to come out and help. <laughs> I'm like, thank you for making me feel included. <laughs> That's funny. I'm scared of the geese. And we would come over like we had that rake in hand. <laughs> That's what I did too. I hold the rake yeah, and my daughter just walks us. through. She's like, what's yeah. he going to do? I'm like, bite your finger off. She's like, no, he's not. <laughs> he's scary. Oh, man. I do love the ducks because we just barely got three and they're bigger now and like I don't know just the way they like make their sounds it's like they're laughing and mocking like (laughs) like I'll like watch from the window and I can I have it open or whatever and I like I'll be like oh like they're laughing at the chickens or (laughs) they're mocking the dogs because the dogs will be barking you know and I'm like you know they're egging them on or something yeah we've learned a lot from them too like unintentionally but my kids we went to the lake and there was ducks on the lake and you can see 
the difference between a male and a female you can physically see and you can hear it and my kids are listening and they're like that's a drake like they know that's the difference awesome. and then my sister was with us and she's like how do you know and they're like well he's got a little curl and he sounds like this but a girl doesn't have the curl and she sounds like this and so they're teaching my sister who's older than me even and she's like I just learned something new I'm like that's just because we have them in our backyard and they learn you know like you you were taking care of our yard and they had babies and so my kids have learned the whole process they know how to candle the eggs they know how to see how that life goes and how you know the process of that life and they yeah. see the mating and they see you know like they know they know all that stuff there's no weirdness mm-hmm. especially when we start talking about their bodies and how they reproduce and how their bodies work it's not weird when you grow up on a farm because you see it every day yeah <laughs> it's on display every morning welcome it's yes. mating season <laughs> yes and it's a natural process and right and then that. they're not they're like huh how does that work what does this look like in my body how do we reproduce and i'm like oh well here you go and there's no taboo there's no friends to like mock it and laugh at it or be uncomfortable Mm -hmm. it's just us and it's just a normal conversation about how life works yes and you know I do home birth and so that's something I do love is like my daughters especially being able to see that natural process of what birth is what it looks like um and my midwife comes and visits me at my home and so like all my kids are there and they get to participate and like I have a little fetoscope so almost every night my little three-year-old <laughs> will so put it on and she'll like you know try to listen for baby and but like palpate and stuff that's and it's just so, cool. so sweet like they play midwife so it's <laughs> awesome to see my kids don't have that because mm-hmm. I mean because you're out of that season, <laughs> I'm out of the season of having but you know kids, just but... those little things like you're saying with the farm and stuff and having that open yeah. up conversation and stuff and you know I think birth is something in America anyway that you know it's very um medicated and very like emergent when it not it doesn't have to be that way you know obviously there are cases where people are high risk and they need that emergent and that attention and stuff but um yeah it's just cool I think just the whole home aspect of everything Mm -hmm. and learning through home cooking home birth you know home farming home studying all that stuff yeah and really just rolling with whatever you're doing is a learning experience you know I I see people all the time like what does the state require for me to document how do I document this how do I and I'm like and people are like well, we missed school this week because we were sick. And I'm like, but what did your kids learn while you were sick? Like, mm-hmm. did they learn the compassionate care to bring you a tissue or to be quiet while you're resting? Like, what did they learn? Because that's social studies. Like, yeah. you can put anything into school. Did they play with Legos while you took a nap? Did they watch a documentary? <laughs> yeah, did they, yeah, what did they watch Science. on TV? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did they play computer games? Like, did they play Minecraft? What did they learn from that? Mm-hmm. How can you expand the conversation from what you're doing in everyday life? Did they have to make their own meal? Did they have to, you know, there's so many things. Did, did you send them outside so that you could get some rest? What did they learn outside? Did they jump in a puddle? There's physics. You yeah. know, there's so many things. And I see a lot of parents freak out of, I don't even know. Like, I don't know. I'm scared to homeschool. Like, how do I teach them? And what curriculum do I use? And I'm like, do you understand, though? Like, just being outside, mm-hmm. how many things you can learn just by looking at a tree even just laying and looking at the clouds you know like I don't know there's so much that your mind just does and like you know yeah you see things in the clouds and it's just that creativity I feel like you know yeah and then you can take that into art or you can do it by in math like you can look at the clouds and say how many clouds do you see okay now if we had three times that amount there's multiplication right there Mm -hmm. and they're you know it might be using their fingers or they might be counting the clouds three times it doesn't matter how they get to the answer but you can get to it and then you learn about okay how are clouds made what are they what's the water cycle and you're learning science there's so many like one thing can lead to so many others and then Mm -hmm. you can bring in art and say okay draw your own clouds yeah and and you can even add to that and say i want you to draw three times four equals how many clouds that's how many clouds you need to draw in your picture and then draw the birds and what's their formation why do they form in a v why there's so much that's just yeah you can tie it all in never ending i feel like like it's just amazing when you i think it's really stepping outside that box of public school you know because if you were raised in public school you know then that's like what you know and then especially for me because i was a young mom who was homeschooling um and i just feel like a lot of people were like what are you doing? Like, you don't have a teaching degree. You can't do this, you know? And, um, but like once I let go of this 
expectation that it had to look like public school, mm -hmm. the world was so much bigger for homeschooling. Like, and it's just amazing, the flexibility and the funness and just, you know. It, you say that as we sit in my classroom, right? Like I've got a <laughs> desk and chairs and all of the, the whole library and I have a whole classroom that we're literally sitting in. But it's really just a storage room. We don't do much in here. We do in the cold months when it's too snowy and too gross to go outside. My kids have to go outside and sled and do all that. But the teaching actually happens in this room. But when it's warm like this, we're sitting on the front porch. We're in the car. You wouldn't believe how many conversations we've had. That's how my kids learned how to read. I mean, yeah. we had a, a reading book series that we worked on at home. But a lot of it was like, okay, look at the logo. Here's this logo that you recognize. Now look at the word underneath it spell it out see if you can figure that out like you see an ambulance you see their their logo the kid, they know ambulance and then they learn to spell because it's on the side of it as well and you know you're looking at stores and mm -hmm. whatever and so learning to read in the car learning from streets that's how I learned to read yeah. too that's how my mom taught me so that's awesome but there's so many things that I don't think a lot of people understand really how easy it can be it can be hard but it can be easy and you don't have to have a classroom most of the time we're at the kitchen counter or we're on the front porch or we're camping or whatever mm -hmm. and then the the other thing I hear all the time and this was my husband's biggest like the social aspect yeah the socialization which it just makes me laugh because in public school you have to sit at your desk and be quiet if you're talking you get docked social points and so I just think it's so funny you know and of well, course you have recess timed. but it's not very long it's time but it's also with the same age groups mm -hmm. so you're with the same kids all the time that's not reality I don't see you all the time and I, right. I see you enough but I don't see you every day for mm -hmm. hours on end and then I'm expected to work with you and play with you that doesn't that's not reality that's not well, how life really works and even like the bully aspect too because if you're mm -hmm. stuck with those same group of kids all through school mm -hmm. you're stuck with the same bully <laughs> and I just I don't think that's healthy or good either so like you, right, know, you can't get away yeah and and the schools really our laws have done a lot of damage to our schools and being able to handle that bullying because mm -hmm. they can't they can't do they, there's their no hands are tied. yeah right they can't really do it it's not their kids but what I've noticed in homeschools one they get way more social time because they have time for it and there's a huge community of homeschoolers and even if there's not when we're going to museums they're learning to interact with they're learning like when we're at the park, you push the baby on the swing. You mm -hmm. don't swing and push that baby out. You you step up and you push the baby on the swing. If a little kid falls, you go and help. There There is no, like, not my problem, not my age group, whatever. You're dealing with people on all different social, I mean, like, age levels, right? Like, their emotions are totally different from a baby to an adult. But they're also, like, when we're out and we're at a restaurant and they need ketchup, go ask for it and they're not scared to deal with an adult because they're dealing with them on a daily basis and then another thing I notice is the kids that are homeschooled their parents they don't get away with anything their their teacher is their parent and so you don't get away with anything mm -hmm. even like right now my kids are at the park unsupervised ish there's not what like, I'm not there and so but they're held accountable because my friend is there. Mm -hmm. And so the other kid's mom, there is a mom supervising. And if my kid's bully, I'm getting a call. Mm -hmm. And they're two minutes away and they will hear from me. Yep. There is no and I feel like at the park bully. In our homeschool community anyway, like I feel like that's like a thing where we want to know if our kid is doing mm -hmm. wrong because we want to correct that. You know, we want to build their character. It's not just about them getting the academic, the A's. Right. It's about character. And I know for me, like my huge thing with homeschooling is like, bible first like if we're not prioritizing god then there's like no point in like what we're doing you know and so my my priority is i want them to have a relationship with christ i want them to know who he is and so they have to daily read you know portions of their bible for x amount of time they have memory verses and stuff but to me like that's the core curriculum <laughs> like you know is the bible and right. then everything else outside of that because character is what matters to me and truth and you know well, and if you're following that and you believe in Christ and he has a plan for you, one, you have the self-worth mm -hmm. that you, and not only do you have your own self-worth through him, not through me, not, not if I lose my temper, my kids' attitude changes for how they feel about themselves. They know that one, they can correct me, which I teach that way, but I, I'll teach them something wrong and be like, was I right or wrong? And then they have to go and correct nice. and like, see. That's and good. so they, they know that they can question even their mm -hmm. mom, but they have this the self-worth, and then they understand that everyone else does as well. And so there is a respect that comes along with that when you respect yourself enough 
and then you see the worth in everyone else because they are not yep. not because of how they're acting today not because of their diet or their clothes or you know it doesn't matter they have worth because they are mm-hmm. and my own kids have worth because they are and it doesn't matter what anybody else says about you it doesn't matter how anybody else treats you you still have worth and you can see theirs mm-hmm. and if you have a heart like god has a heart for everyone else you're going to be respectful yep. you're not going to step over those lines and yeah, you're right. In our community that we have here, everyone's God based. Mm-hmm. That we, I mean, that I can think of. Everyone, all the homeschoolers, yeah, yeah, they're all God based, and so we don't have those issues with bullying. Really, yeah. I don't. I don't. I, I haven't remember. heard of any. Yeah, I, <laughs> the only time I can think of bullying happening in our homeschool life, public school was out, and it was a public school kid. Yeah, not to bash. I'm just saying. Like, right, right. Their parents, generally, when they're in school, parents are less involved. Because yeah. that's just the nature of school, right? Right. Going to school. Well, and just you're away from your parents for so long, too. So they might not even have as much of an influence on you as being with your parent all day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's, that's kind of a... I, that's just <laughs> dawning on me right now, the, the time commitment that we put into our kids. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and it's funny because, you know, I have so many kids. And so I'll get a lot like, you can't possibly invest, you know, in all your kids or whatever. And I'm just like... You know, most parents, both of them go to work, their kids go to school, after school their kids have activities away from their parents still, and then their kids come home, maybe they eat dinner together, and then after that they're doing homework and going to bed. I hated that. And I hated public school because of that, like, even with my son. When I grader. worked too when I was in high school, and so like there was even less time, you know. And so it's just funny to me because I'm like, I get to love on my babies all day. I get to cuddle them while they're doing math, right. like, and we get to, you know... When I'm teaching my little ones, my older kids, I'll do, like, self-study. Um, if they have questions, of course, they can come to me. But it's just amazing to be able to just hold your little ones and, you know, work through reading together and have them on your lap. On or their just, level, yeah. too. So the frustration yeah. is taken out because they don't feel the pressure of Trying all the other up. Yeah, all the other kids. And, like, my oldest, she's not really into math. Mm-hmm. She doesn't really. Like, unless it has to do with cooking or baking, don't yeah. chill and care. But... <laughs> When she was in school, she got so far behind. So I sent her into school. They actually told me stop teaching her at home because she's way ahead. And then when I got her back, when COVID happened, she was actually two grades less than what I sent her into. And she basically just got left behind. They say no child left behind. But what ended up happening is they still have to move forward. Mm -hmm. They still have to keep going. Well, my kid missed, you know, like you were saying with fractions, like maybe you just missed something didn't click. And then they still go forward and she's like but I'm here and they're like well we're here so catch up so just forget that forget that stepping stone that you needed and just this is what we're doing now and then when I got her home it took me three months to get her back up to a grade level three months I'm like she was in school for three years and you guys actually sent her back (laughs) instead of forward because she missed that piece and then her confidence was completely shot she Mm -hmm. didn't want to do math at all because she just felt dumb and she's a perfectionist that's my fault yeah. <laughs> well no I think it's that natural thing no I remember but I am too <laughs> you know being marked as like jeans. a failure like yeah. you know and, and it kind of carries with you like I had to take a ceramics class in high school and I'm not artistic at all I love ceramics <laughs> and I loved like just doing like the base of like pots and stuff but we had to do like a whole like half body sculpture thing <laughs> I failed that <laughs> and it just made me think like I'm not good at art, but then like there's like things like graphic design. I love doing like, yeah, that kind too. of work, you know, and stuff. And it's like, so it was just that one thing versus like the whole picture, you know. Right, and that's how she was with math, and now she's. She, I get it. I don't want to sit and do times tables either. You have to. You've got to figure it out. But if I can say, okay, we're tripling this recipe. We're mm-hmm. making cinnamon rolls, and we're tripling it. And now she's like, oh, well then I can take this half cup required here and times it by three, and she can do it. And it's like had she had that motivation before or the time to really sit down and say okay I actually don't know how to times three times one yeah instead of saying well we moved past that so now we're into division and she's like whoa whoa I don't have the stepping stone I need well in homeschool I can stop and say okay you're missing the boat here let's go back to the fundamental that you needed before you missed it somewhere let's like for her to make it click it's music so we listen to times table songs and then we hear the real songs and she's like hey 
this has different words. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's not actually a time table song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's what works for her. Mm-hmm. Where they're not doing that in school because they don't have the resources to do it. They, they can't. There's too many kids. Yeah. This is how they teach it. And you either learn it that way or you don't. Where in homeschool, I can say, okay. My one kid can sit down and she's got mental math down. She learns the like 11s. You're going to do this and this and here's the rules and she can do it in her head. My other one doesn't. She needs to hear the song. She needs to, it took me forever to teach her time tables until we found what worked. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, she's got it and she can do it in her head because she can sing the song. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is like, it's nice because you can find what works for each individual child and like. The question I hate the most <laughs> is what grade are your kids in? Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know because like some of them in are... What subject. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because some of them are ahead in reading or ahead in math or behind, you know, in math or whatever. So like, it's just nice because it's so customized to what they need. Right. And it's just so individual based, you know, it's not like my son here has to keep up with the kid two years older than him or whatever on the same track. Because you, you don't have to do that. You can just totally optimize it to each child. And yeah. for us, you know, for my older kids, we focus on the three R's. So reading, writing, and arithmetic. Um, and so they have, like, their math books. They read the lesson. They do the lesson. And then we do corrections. And if they get a certain amount wrong, they have to redo it. Yeah. And so we because too. we're not working on just getting through and doing a lesson every day because we have to stay on track, it's we want mastery. And I think that's the important thing yeah. is, like, actually understanding and knowing so that you can move forward because if you're just dragging them along they just get left well, behind they don't care yeah they don't care and then they feel they check out like, completely and it really it really ruins their self-confidence in that area mm-hmm. you know my daughter wants to be a marine biologist and i'm like okay we have to be good at math for that and she's like i hate math i'm not good at math i guess i can't have that job and i'm like no you can work on if it. you want to be a marine biologist then you need to find out what kind of math is required and then you'll be motivated to learn it Mm-hmm. But until you have a purpose, I never cared about the area and the whatever, all of that math. I was like, I will never build a deck in my life until yeah. I'm an adult. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. okay, each duck <laughs> needs this much space and we have this many ducks and I actually have to figure this. And then I learned it and it clicked. Then I was an adult when that happened, but I had the stepping stone. You know, I was introduced to it. I knew it existed at least, but I never passed any of that stuff in school. No yeah. way. Yeah. No way. I didn't care about percentages till I'm a real estate agent. I never cared about percentages until it came down to my paycheck. You're right. <laughs> you yeah. know, and then it's like, oh, well, I can figure out those percentages <laughs> in my brain now because I yeah. care. So yeah. it's it's just, I don't know, it's such a cool, it's a cool life to live. I'm so grateful that, one, that COVID happened. That sounds terrible, but. It's not, though, because I think a lot of parents were able to, life. to see the difference. And, you know, I know when it happened, though, like a lot of people were doing homeschool, but it was public no. school at home and it, it's not the same not at you all know. I hated it it was pulling teeth I told my husband after two weeks you do it if you want her to stay in school you do it if you don't want to do it then I will sign the affidavit and pull her into homeschool because yeah. I will not it's somebody else's idea of how class should look and I'm trying to implement their idea that is impossible it has to be them teaching what they intended to teach the way they intended to teach it because I can't keep they don't have time to teach me their what they're trying to get across I don't know how all these programs, it's not the same. It's not the same, which is a big reason I build my own curriculum because then I know what my intention is for the teaching. Mm -hmm. Using other curriculums, they're great. There's some that I have used, um, like the good and the beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful, but I'm like, this isn't how I teach. This is not my style at all. My kids love it. I don't. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. So yeah. I'm going to sit and I'm going to take their digital art class and we're going to build our own curriculum for things that they care about. Yeah. And you know, I, for a long time, I loved playing teacher, so to say. And, um, but as I had more kids and stuff, it just wasn't possible to teach all the different levels. I'd be there all day, you know? Yeah. Every um, <laughs> and so it was really helpful when I did decide to teach them independent study and have them be able to do it on their own, the older mm-hmm. kids. And then I can really focus on getting the younger kids like you know having them learn reading and be independent in that and once they learn you know basic math and reading they can move on and do independent study so that's really nice so how do you teach that and I know I've had people come to me and this is a question I don't know how to answer I just my kids just independently want to study so but how do you teach if you're moving into homeschool now you're brand new to it how do you teach them to want to independently study I think having that motive, though, that we talked about, like screen time, right? Because I know for my kids, so I, it's like you have to get chores in school done before you can have free time. And so um, so for 
my little ones, they have to learn reading and they have to learn the flashcards um, addition up to division. They have to have that mastered before they can start the actual math textbooks. Okay. And of course they have to have reading mastered so they can, um, you know, read the lessons and stuff. And so basically it's, you know, you get to go through this because they're capable. You know, you can read oh, that yeah. lesson and learn how to do X, Y, Z, and then apply it in the in the um, problem section. And so, of course, like when they're first starting out, if they need a little bit of extra help, I can totally do that and stuff. But for the most part, I feel like once they're reading, my kids just take off and they love reading. They they read like all night, like my it's crazy. Too. Yeah, like it's you talked about. whole new world, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. When you talked about having a night owl, and a lot of my kids are, and especially my teenagers, they're up late and, you know, they'll be up reading or like writing music or different stuff. And it is nice to have that flexibility where they can sleep in because I remember even as a teenager, like, I don't feel like I necessarily stayed up super late all the time if I did work, sometimes I did. Um, but I remember being exhausted getting up early, like, and just so low function. And like my first class I think was math or something. And it's like, I could not focus. Like I had no idea what was going on yeah. and I was just so groggy and tired, you know? See, and I'm an early bird, so school worked well for me. I, I actually really enjoyed going to public school. Um, but that's what worked best for us. It wasn't really an option back then either. Homeschool was weird. Like all the kids were yeah. weird. <laughs> it's funny because my husband will be like, the homes, our kids are so weird. It's <laughs> like, we well, took a video of them the other day playing at the sand dunes and <laughs> he was like, is this like a kid thing? Are kids weird? Or is it because they're homeschooled? And I was like, you know what? Both. But really like, who cares? Yeah. They are we want totally our kids to be themselves. Different. And they're, they're weird because they can talk to adults. They can ask for what they need. They can study on their own. They can read proficiently. Their language skills are unbelievable, better than most adults. Mm -hmm. There are some things my daughter say, I'm like, what does that mean? Because they've read it in a book. And yeah. it's... I think it's a self-confidence too, right? Yeah. Like, you don't have that peer pressure. You don't have... They don't like, care if they look dumb. Yeah. Yeah, they, they don't so there's care so much to if they're that. running through sand dunes on their knees, which is the video <laughs> that I got. They're they're on their knees having going fun. through. They're just having the time of their life, and they don't have any cares what anybody thinks of them because they know their worth, and that goes back to the God thing. Mm -hmm. They have God, and they, it doesn't matter if I tell them, you guys are so weird. They're like, thanks, <laughs> because they, they have that self-worth, and they're like, I'm allowed to be weird. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to be who it's I okay. am. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm allowed to have a fit when there's math and my mom will hold me and I like my oldest she gets so frustrated she'll cry when we're doing math especially when it's new mm -hmm. and she just cries and I'm like come sit on my lap mm -hmm. let me hold you I know if you were in school you'd be so made fun of for crying right now but this is a safe place yep. and you can cry and you know what I get frustrated too and when I get frustrated I also cry yeah and you know who holds me my kids they're That's there for awesome. everything like yeah and I love to, like, in those forward. moments, we can push pause. We can say, you know what, let's take a break from math. And I think yeah. that's amazing because in public school, you can't do that, you know, and they, they're expected to still turn in their homework and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And so I know, like, I had most of my kids have been reading around age four or five is when they've been taught to read. Sorry. It's starting it's, to storm. It's storming and my kids are at the park, so... Hopefully they might but be coming home. They might be That's okay. We're about done too. Um, but when my kids, I usually teach them to read by around age four or five. Well, my fourth son, he was a totally different child and he just was not, like some of them really love like academics and like workbooks and he was not that way at all. And so I tried to introduce it to him and he just didn't want to do it. And so he wasn't, he was probably like six or seven when he started to learn to read, but it was nice that we could put that on pause and we mm -hmm. could say, Okay, I can see that like right now is not the time for you. And then you talk to them, and they you can they can learn the language through talking, mm -hmm. or you can read to them. Which yeah, I reading think, to them I think is a huge yeah. you know. See, my background is in literacy, right? Which is why we have what we have. But it's all literacy based and teaching kids how to read, and and really not doing it the American way, doing it the way other countries do it because we kind of have it backwards here. But it is the target is missed a lot by parents because they're like, no, my kid has to read and here's the required reading. And a lot of the books don't make sense anyway. But then when your kid reads it, there, there's not a story there. And we learn through stories and it's okay to you read their required stuff for school. You read that. That stuff is boring. They do not care. They're only getting context through pictures anyway. It's, you know, like I am Sam, whatever. 
they're getting the context through the pictures. Anyway, so you read their required reading and you let them read stuff they're interested in. It doesn't matter if it's a magazine, if it's a road sign, if it's a menu, it doesn't matter. You count their time in that. But then you also read them stories. You remember that book? Oh, yeah. I just gave Jen a book because I have two copies. But you read them stuff like this where they get context from the pictures, but the words are funny and they're big and you teach them language and it does not matter if they're looking at the book. They can be playing with Legos or drawing pictures or running around having a pillow fight. You just read mm -hmm. because they're hearing it. Yeah. If they're not interested in looking at the book. It doesn't matter. It's really the language that matters and that they understand the context and the story and they learn the lesson in the book. You just read. Yep. It doesn't matter if they're looking at it. It doesn't matter if they're interested. My kids, when they were little, I read at breakfast time. Every morning, I don't eat breakfast. They intermittent fast, so I don't eat breakfast. So I prepare them breakfast and while they're eating, I read. Mm -hmm. And that has been a habit forever. And I'll tell you what, every single morning, my kids, they get up at different times. One gets up super early, one gets up late. They eat at different times, but they always sit and read a book. Always. I'm not reading to, to them anymore. They're reading on their own, but it's a habit we've created where when you That's eat, true. you read. Mm -hmm. when, when it's breakfast time, you read. And so they always have a book in their hand when they're eating breakfast because that's a habit we created when they were little. Yeah. And they love to read because they understand the story. If they're just reading to read, to get the words down or get the time in, that's right. terrible. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. They don't understand the context. It's not fun. But when they understand, oh, there's a story that goes along with this, or there's some history that we can learn here, or there's whatever it is, whatever their interests are, once they understand how cool books are, they don't, they'll never stop. Yeah. Yeah, and I know when my kids were little, like, and I saw little ones, of course, you know, that frustration sometimes of, like, they're being loud, they're not listening, but, like, really, I think just doing it and making that routine and that mm -hmm. habit, and, you know, if they are coloring or doing something else, like, that's okay, and it's actually been shown that it's people beneficial. who, like, do even, like, knitting and mm -hmm. stuff, like, there's people who will go to church and knit or whatever, but it helps them, their brain to absorb more of what is being that's said. That's how I function. Yeah. I actually learn more. <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but... If somebody, if I'm trying to learn something new, like how to make sourdough bread is like what we're doing right now. And I'm like, okay, I will actually play games on my phone, like mindless games, but, um, like candy crush or something stupid, but I can actually focus on what's Sorry, happening more. over here. If I'm doing something with my hands over here. Isn't so, that crazy? Yeah. And I used to hand my kids, different. like right. here's paints or here's, you know, crayons or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. Here's a sticker book. And I would hand that to them. We're going to have story time now here's something and for you helps, to do. I think that honestly helps them to be occupied to be quiet, you know, mm -hmm. so they're not just running around like chaos and, yeah. you know, being crazy. We did spelling so. too, I'd say. I'm going to read this book. So we're reading Harry Potter, say. I'm going to read this book. Write down any words that you don't know how to spell or you don't know what it means. And so they would write down phonetically and then we would go back when I'm done reading, maybe the next morning or before we read the book again. And they're like, I don't know what a goblin is. Oh, this is what a goblin is. And then this is how you properly spell it. And so we were doing spelling that way. So they would sit with a clipboard and a piece of paper and even three years old would jot down, you know, words that maybe thief, I don't know what thief is. And it would be spelled not correct at all, you know, but they, yeah. they heard it and then they get to learn the vocabulary. Oh, Which reading is great. So cool. Yeah. Um, and I, I love it literacy. too. Cause like, even like she was saying with breakfast, like I do eat breakfast. So like I can turn on like an audio Bible or even an mm -hmm. audio book. We have Audible and we did, um, there was some free downloads on there. I can't think of what the title was, but they had like the fun voices where like they were switching yeah. between characters. And I just think there's so much to that too. And I try to do that when I am reading. Sometimes I'm like too nauseous when I'm pregnant and stuff, but like, I think it's so fun when you can like do different voices I'm for different characters. <laughs> I am too, but it's, you know, <laughs> but it draw their it's attention. hilarious. <laughs> See, and I read like this, I'm like, when the kids are like, man, oh, this happened the other day with my nephew. He's like, books are dumb. I don't want to read. I want to play the keyboard. I don't care about that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> Have you ever seen that before? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't know sheeps could fly. And he's like, sheeps can fly. And I'm like, I mean, he's got a parachute. <laughs> and then I read the story and then he's completely engaged, right? Where you're like, you think you this isn't cool, <laughs> but look how cool this is, you know? Yeah. Like, it's a lot of fun. Or like when we're reading, we're reading Chronicles of Narnia right now. And there's parts where it gets super intense and I'll start reading really fast. I'm not good at the voices, but I can read really mm -hmm. fast. And then my kids are like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. It like draws them back. They're in like, our, no. Yeah. yeah. Or I'll be like, and boom, <laughs> the lightning struck. And then they're like, 
what are you doing? And it draws their attention back in. So yeah. I could talk about literacy. For, yeah. If you guys ever have, want literacy tips or anything like that, let me know. My kids are here. Perfect. Stay yeah, no, it's fine. And we can totally wrap it up. So um, is there anything that you want to say in comments, like where people can find you on what different platforms? Yeah, you guys, I'm sure we can link. Mm -hmm. Right. I can put it all on the bottom too. Yeah. You can find my profile is a swing and a sway. It's on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm everywhere. But if you go to my Facebook, you can find my whatever link tree to everything and we can post it below too. So you can, you guys, you guys can go watch and see what we do every day. Yeah. So thanks so much for Thank coming you. on and this is fun. fun. So we'll see next time I get to interview you. <laughs>